Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for today is inflammatory foods. As you know, inflammation is the root cause of many diseases, and there are foods that they can cause or aggravate inflammation, and today you're going to know them. My name is Abzar Habibini. I have an MD degree, and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sports Nutrition. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information we share on a weekly basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sports nutrition. Okay, there are a, a long list of foods that they can cause inflammation or they can make inflammation worse. But please keep in mind something very important, that inflammation is an immediate response of the body to an injury or any other harm for stimuli. Basically, inflammation is a defense mechanism of the body to heal. Without the inflammation, we cannot heal. But if inflammation becomes chronic, then it's going to lead to lots of troubles. And here is a long list of the foods that they can aggravate inflammation or they can make inflammation worse. And let's review them. Okay, number one, refined carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates such as white flour, white bread, white rice, cereals, and added sugars. Number two, sugar and sodas. If you are the type of person that you have lots of sugars in your diet or you are a big fan of those soft drinks, I am afraid your diet is very inflammatory. Number three, foods that they are high in trans fat. I'm going to have a video about trans fat in the future, what it is and how it is made, where does it come from, but please keep in mind that any foods that they are high in trans fat, they are very inflammatory. And here are the, some examples of the foods that they could contain trans fat. Fries, chips, cookie, crackers, muffin, donut, pastry, cakes, uh, all good stuffs. Number four, red meat. Number five, margarine. Lard. Lard is a, is a kind of fat that comes from pig, and it has been rendered and clarified for use in cooking. In some culture, they use lard for cooking. Shortenings. Shortening is a kind of fat that is solid in room temperature. Number six, solanine. Solanine is a sort of a plant toxin that is produced by certain plants as a defense mechanism. The three vegetables that they are very high in solanine are potato, tomato, and eggplant. You know, sometimes when you go to grocery shopping and you go to the section that you want to buy potato, you can see sometimes green spots on uh, potatoes. Those green spots are solanine or sometimes you buy potato and you leave it in the kitchen you don't use it for a while after a while you can see the potato has started budding we call them tubers those tubers are very high in solanine number seven alcohol number eight processed meats all processed meats are considered inflammatory number nine gluten you know, if you have inflammation of the GI system, let's say you have uh, Crohn diseases, you have ulcerative colitis, or you have celiac disease, it's better that you stay away from those foods that they contain gluten. But few recent study also shows that if you have inflammation in any part of the body, let's say you have arthritis, and if you go on gluten-free diet, you feel definitely difference. Gluten you find in here, in wheat, barley, rye, bulgur, couscous, uh, kamut, spelt, museli, and semolina. Number 10, foods that they are high in omega-6. We have at least five types of omega Six, we call them ALA, GLA, DGLA, arachidonic acid, and adrenic acid. Actually, omega-6 is very uh, pro-inflammatory agent. And the foods that they are high in omega-6, 
you can see here milk egg yolk and beef fat actually beef fat and egg yolk they are very high in arachidonic acid among those five types of omega-6 that I listed arachidonic is the worst one is the most powerful uh, pro-inflammatory agent in egg yolk and beef fat is arachidonic acid because in your body arachidonic acid is going to convert directly to two things leukotrienes and prostaglandins E2 two powerful uh, pro-inflammatory agents in the body and other foods that they are high in omega-6 are some flower oil borage oil grapeseed oil and black currant oil but one of the I put in here uh, uh, number 11 but actually number 11 is related to number 10 the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 plays a very important role in cardiovascular health among experts they have agreed that the in your diet the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 should be less than 4 to 1 that means in your diet it's okay to have omega-6 uh, up to five times more than omega-3 but we know that most people their diet is very high in omega-6 a typical western diet contains omega-6 up to 10 times from 10 times up to 30 times more than omega-3 so a typical western diet is very inflammatory so if your diet uh, has omega-6 more than uh, five times omega-3 we're gonna consider your diet basically inflammatory however in here they're a little bit controversial uh, we have in here five fruits and vegetables that they contain omega-6 and omega-3 for example you can see in here avocado one medium avocado is going to give you 3395 milligrams omega-6 just 220 milligrams omega-3 so you can see that the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 in avocado is way way higher this puts avocado in inflammatory group but we know that avocado has lots of other nutrients that they can fight inflammation and also omega-6 in plants little bit of them can convert to omega-3 but this never happens in human so in human omega-6 cannot convert to omega-3 but this is definitely possible in plants and the other one is corn you can see one medium corn has about 835 milligrams of omega-6 just 25 milligrams omega-3 the ratio is uh, way high and coconut uh, 100, 100 uh, grams of coconut meat contains uh, 365 milligrams of omega-6 and there is no omega-3 in coconut and in here olive 100 grams of olive gives you 1250 milligrams of omega-6 just 92 milligrams of omega-3 you can see the ratio of omega-6 to 3 in olive is way higher right even uh, more than 10 and there's a fruit it's called passion fruit you can see that omega-6 uh, is 968 milligrams but we have over there a little bit omega uh, basically three just three milligrams so uh, this is as I said these uh, five fruits and vegetables there are lots of controversial information about them but however if someone has inflammation and you want to heal completely you want to get rid of that inflammation in your body I would definitely suggest you you, you stay away from those uh, five fruits of which was avocado corn coconut olive and passion fruit I'm sure that today you learn something interesting because we make science easy to understand now you know if you don't want to miss our weekly videos you can subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube. To support us, you can share, like, or comment on this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.